country at all. All right, Sarah. Nothing. Uh, Carla? You've, you've, got, you've, got no, you've got no substance to your argument. You're not, oh, even, you have. You're not even backing up. You've got... I okay. have, yeah. You've got less. I have. What happened to Lee Rigby? What happened on 7 7? All the Muslim grooming gangs. Everything let I say is else, factual. Let someone else speak right? for a minute, please, and Tommy. Of course, Mr. Robinson, there are no paedophiles who are white, and yeah. white people have never bombed anyone. 87% of grooming cases are Muslim, yet 5% of the country, you spoke, you spoke, you spoke, you spoke, the country is Muslim. You spoke, you spoke, yeah. you spoke. Yeah. Let me speak. Now, this is exactly the issue, is what I'm saying, right? As much as I agree with what's being said about this man and his, his organisation, right? Can you back up? We then? focus, we focus on fringe bigots rather than dealing with the real central issue that we have a political system. I can't count how many times I've read the Daily Mail or some other paper, not that I read these rags, and it says Pakistani man does blah. When Jimmy Savile is convicted or something comes out about him, is his ethnicity or his religious beliefs put forward as the primary reason for him committing an offence? No. But we can't... Of this kind of bigotry, right? And then, and then, not, act shocked when it comes out. No, 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 no one's prepared one to explain what I said. Second, bigotry. One We're second. Racist. One second. For those who don't know, Baghdad was the intellectual, cultural centre of mathematics and art and science about a thousand years ago for quite a long time. No one blames Islam for that. So negative people who happen to be Muslim, yes, of course, it's your religion that causes it. But if you pioneer mathematics and science and introduce algebra into Europe and the guitar and coffees and lemons, that's not because you're Muslim. Well, the people. Okay. The people We're gonna, I'm going to get an opposing view. This, is, exactly, yeah, this yeah. is exactly what I said at the beginning of the programme. When we deal with racism, rather than dealing with the structural reality and all this nonsense about people are racist because they're frustrated about their life, it's totally classist. Yeah. What we're saying, only working class people are racist. Do me a favour. Racism was not invented by working class people. It was invented by elite academics through pseudoscientific nonsense and perpetuated as part of political policy from the top down, not the bottom up. In fact, if we look back at the history of this country, when there were slave catchers in the streets, people had far more allies in working class parts of London than they did from rich people who were trying to catch them and send them back to the Caribbean. So let's be honest about the history and deal with the bigger problems of structural racism because then smaller things and smaller frustrations that are breeding this type of nonsense won't, won't be excavated so much. But this is the problem is we, we focus on nonsense like this no, rather than dealing with why a British soldier you've probably never heard of, a gentleman called Christopher Alder, died in 1999 in police custody. There is footage on YouTube that you can see for yourself of him on the floor with his bottom half exposed with police officers around him making monkey noises over his dead body. You've never heard his name. Why?